We are beginning a nine-week journey through the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, today is Pentecost Sunday. It's a special day in the life of the church and church calendar. It's 50 days since Easter, and it's in the book of Acts. You read on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and filled the believers, and it was the birthing of the church uh, as we know it. And uh, we still believe that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. And so I want to encourage you, um, t- tonight we've got a uh, prayer and w- extended prayer and worship service happening. So at our five o'clock service, across all across the Elam churches in New Zealand, we're having what we call a mega prayer night uh, for Pentecost Sunday. So every Elam church in New Zealand is going to be praying tonight, and I want to invite you to come and be part of that with us. Come and pray. We're going to have extended prayer and worship, and then Christian's going to bring the word, and it's going to be fantastic. So if you don't normally come to the five, come on out. We'd love to see ya. The fruit of the Spirit. Let's go into Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse number 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The fruit of the Spirit. Have you ever found yourself in a situation or in a moment or responding to something only to stop afterwards and go, that wasn't very Christian of me? Anyone? Maybe it's just me. Well, you like say something to somebody, like, that wasn't Stevie, that wasn't very Christian. I, um, just two weeks ago, after the kids' football game on a Saturday morning, I went to Botany Shops, right? So chaos in the car park, cars everywhere, and so I'm, I'm trying to drive out of like one of the little lanes to go onto the main, one of the main roads at, at Botany, but there is, there's this gigantic curb there and I'm trying to go left around it. And so in order to get around the corner, I kind of have to, I'm gonna have to go wide. I'm gonna have to go kind of wide around onto the other side of the lane, on the other side of the road, and then, and then it'll be all good. So I sit there and I look and I check, we're good, we're good. So I start to ease out. I know I'm gonna be taking a big wide turn and as I come around, and I'm just coming around the other side of the road, and as I come around, this wonderful lady <laughs> zooms up to me to the point where I can now barely get around the corner, and I'm now on the other side of the road, and she starts doing this. <laughs> she starts giving me the, what are you doing? I'll tell you what, she brought the demons out in me. I'm like, and so I'm like doing, I'm like, what am I doing? What are you doing? (laughs) And so she's in her car behind her windshield. I'm in my car behind my windshield. And so I'm trying to say to her, I'm trying to turn. (laughs) No, I'm, it's obvious. So as I'm losing my mind, I eventually come around. I'm so ashamed. I wind my window down. I'm like. (laughs) And out the window I'm going, what is wrong with you? Just relax. (laughs) How many know telling an angry person to relax is a great idea? So so as I then go past her, I go, I think to myself, that wasn't very Christian of you, Steve. And then I had the revelation, that lady could be in my church. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big place, I don't know everybody. So, 
So if, if that was you, nice lady, I'm really sorry. Pray for me. You can, you can have a crunchy every week for the rest of your life. You know, sometimes this passage says there is this war going on between the spirit and the flesh. There's this, these two things that are at odds with one another. The, the work of the Holy Spirit that's trying to lead us into the fruit of the Spirit. And then there's the flesh part of us that is still at odds with that. And I've learned this journey is really two parts. This journey of faith is two parts. One, it's the supernatural empowering of God to live a way, the way that He calls us to live. And the supernatural empowering to live out the fruits of the Spirit, not because it's what you can do, but it's the work of the Spirit in and through your life. That's one part of the journey. But then the other part of the journey is an intentional denying and dealing with and dying to those things of the flesh that are still at work and active in your life. You know, that passage says, we've crucified our flesh with Christ. It's like, man, I'm empowered by the Spirit of God to live His way, but then I'm also having to die to some of that stuff that's still alive in me that needs to get dealt with. And my challenge to us as a church as we go on this journey for the next eight, nine weeks is to be those who follow Jesus, who are aware of the stuff that we still need to deal with, that we are intentionally denying the flesh and putting it aside into death, but also to be intentionally filled by the Holy Spirit that you would produce the fruit that comes through connection with Him, which is exactly what we said, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I was practicing that. (laughs) And the first fruit is love. So if you're connected to the Holy Spirit, there is a supernatural empowerment and, and production of love in your life. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And check this out. This is what Paul says about love. 1 Corinthians 13. If you've ever been to a Christian wedding, you'll know this verse. Love is patient and kind. This This is the picture of what love looks like, real love. It's patient. It's kind. It does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And there's so much we could dive into around the outworking of this fruit in our lives. But what I want to do is I want to just like narrow in on two very specific areas of our lives um, because I want to encourage us as we go from here today that in our tomorrow we might be those who put aside the things of the flesh and actually begin to walk more in line with the Spirit of God. And, and I want to I explore these by asking two questions, okay? The first question is this. Number one, is love on display in my words? Is it on display in my words? After working with people for over 20 years now, like my whole, my whole working career, my whole li- working life has been just working with people. And after working with people for, for over 20 years, one thing I know is this, if people value it so much when you remember their name, like nothing means more to people than when you remember their name. And I've had messages and emails from people going, hey, I just wanna let you know, when you, I saw you, you remembered my name, it meant the world to me, it was an absolutely amazing. It's a, it's a real special thing when you can remember someone's name. But with a church this size, that is very difficult. <laughs> Do you realize how hard that is in a church this size, trying to remember all of your names? Like, and then we, we, we have these little default things, like someone comes up for prayer, this is a little trick that us pastors do. Comes up for prayer and you know them, but you cannot quite get their name out. And so you're like, Lord, I just pray for my brother. (laughs) Lord, just bless your son who loves you and knows you. God, I just pray for my friend here 
You just like, you just like, and then you just pray, Lord, give me their name for the love of Lord. I remember vividly, vividly, when Bex and I, so my wife's name is Rebecca, we call her Bex. I remember vividly when we were dating, we were, we've been dating for about a month, like we were young, and, and I, I took her to a party with a bunch of my friends. And so we go to this party, she's my new girlfriend, her name is Rebecca, and, and I go up to the first friend at the party and I say, oh, this is my girlfriend, Rachel. Instantly, I was like, who's Rachel? <laughs> I don't know why I said Rachel. Needless to say, I've been making up for that for 23 years, and it still regularly comes up in our lives as ammunition to get me to do stuff. So I couldn't remember her name, so if I can't remember yours, please just show me some grace. I, I can barely remember my kids' names. But words are funny things, hey, like, once they're out, you can't get them back in. Like, once a word comes out, you, you can't get that thing back in. And in many instances in our lives, we need to ask the question when it comes to the words we're speaking, where is this, is, is this spirit or is this bit of flesh? Like, th these words I'm about to say to somebody, where is that coming from? Is this, is this spirit, is this in love? Or is this a bit of me and the flesh still trying to come through? Because the fruit of the spirit is love. And if the words I'm using do not carry with them love, then perhaps there's still some stuff in me that I need to deal with because the fruit of the Spirit is love. Proverbs 18, 21 says this, the power of the tongue is life and death. The Spirit is life, the flesh is death. The Bible paints that picture super clearly. So here we go, guys, listen to me, especially the men in the room. Listen, there's gonna come a moment when you are in the work lunchroom, on the golf course, in the gym, with some buddies and a conversation is gonna come up, and jokes are going to be told, and innuendo is going to be given, and stories are going to be regaled, and there is gonna be a temptation for you to partake in that conversation, but you have to ask the question, is this spirit or is this flesh? Because the words you speak should have an embodiment of truth, love, of love. Love is patient, kind. It's not self-seeking, doesn't boast. Can I speak to the ladies for a minute? I won't look at any of you, don't worry. <laughs> this is so dangerous, eh? <laughs> ladies, there is... <laughs> there is gonna come a moment when the gossip circle is rolling. And this isn't exclusive to ladies, like I'm generalizing, I'm so bad. There's gonna come a moment when the gossip circle is rolling and the rumor mill is going and there is a temptation to jump in and begin to partake in that. But you gotta ask yourself, is this spirit or is this flesh? Because, because the fruit of the spirit is love, and as Christians, we're really good at like painting gossip as different things, like prayer requests. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Hello, okay, listen, we need to pray for Gary. I heard he's alcoholic. Yes, I know, how terrible, terrible for Susie. Oh, we must lift her up in prayer. Let's get the girls right, like. Don't tell me you don't do that. Have you heard about Jane? Oh my gosh, we need to pray for her. Why? You've got to ask the question, is this spirit or is this flesh? Where is this coming from? Because it should have an embodiment of love. Is there love in my words? With my wife, with my children, with my colleagues, with those around me, 
you know, that, that, that word I'm about to speak in anger at somebody, the fruit of the Spirit is love, and love is not easy to anger. It doesn't go there quickly. So if I'm speaking in anger, maybe there's a bit more flesh than there is spirit at work. That cutting comment that you know is gonna hurt someone. Love is patient and love is kind. That passive aggressive suggestion. Love is not rude or arrogant. That joke at someone else's expense. Love is not self-seeking. See, here's a question. Are my words bearing the fruit of the spirit, which is love? Or is there still some flesh I need to deal with? Here's my second question. Is love on display in my service? Is love on display in my words? And is love on display in my service? Earlier this year, over New Year's, we were on holiday. We, uh, friends of ours had given us their house uh, down in Tauranga, and we were, we were down there, and they have a pool. And they were, you, know, you know those friends who have like a really nice house and a pool, and they're like, hey, do you guys want a house sit? I'm like, you had me at hey. No, we're coming. <laughs> So we get, we're having a great time, just relaxing. We had like two weeks at the house, lying by the pool, eating junk, like staying up late, sleeping in long. Oh, like just amazing. While we're on holiday, about three, four days before we're due to finish our holiday, I got a phone call from my friend Tammy at, at 7.30 in the morning. He calls me, I'm like, oh, dude, okay. Yo, Tammy, what's up? And he's like, hey, bro. So uh, you know, you know how me and the boys are doing a CrossFit competition this weekend? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know, Tammy. Good for you, bro. It's your first one. It's going to be amazing. He goes, yeah, yeah, there's a problem, though. Um, John, Johnny's injured. I'm like, that's too bad. <laughs> he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And we've, we, we've, we've called around the boys, and, um, and no, one can, no one can help us out. No one can join in. No, one can, no one's available. I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a shame. <laughs> He goes, oh, Oos, like, please, bro, could you help us out? We need one more guy on our team to do this comp. And so I, I'm still half asleep, and so I agree. I'm like, okay, bro, I'll help you out. So three days later, after lying by a pool for two weeks, we drive straight to the competition floor, uh, and like, so I'm like literally in board shorts and jandals, and I rock up to this, this comp. Luckily, I had some gym shoes in the car. So we get in there. And I'm like, all right, boys, don't expect much from me. We're going we're gonna to do our best. So we, there's four events in the day. Uh, and after event number one, I'm lying on the floor. My heart rate is at about 199 beats a minute. I'm gasping for air. I think I'm about to meet Jesus. And, <laughs> and, and one of the other boys who also got called in late, roll, like literally rolls over to me and he goes, oos. Why do we do this again? <laughs> Brother, that's a great question. That's a gr Why are we doing this again? Can, can I be honest, church? I've wondered that question many times as a pastor. Why am I doing this again? Like, after 22 years of my life, why am I... Why am I doing this again? Because, like, I know God called me to it, and I know God gifted me to do it, and I, and I know that this is, like... He gave me a passion to serve him, but man, it can be hard sometimes and can be discouraging sometimes. It can be disappointing sometimes and I, you know, I can get frustrated and I get really driven and I can get really upset and, and, and over time I have to come back to the real reason and the real motivation to why I'm here and why I'm doing it and it's love because God loved me and he saved me and he ransomed me from my sin, and, and in turn, God gave me this supernatural love for people and for His church and for His Word and for lost people in our community. And so that's why I serve God, not for accolade or convenience or position or title, it's love. And church, if, if your service for God is not from a place of love, you won't be able to sustain it. You won't. If the motivation for you, listen, God has called and gifted every one of you. That notice about growth track, that's what that's all about. You discovering what God's made you to do and how He's wired you and discovering the gifts of God on your life. God has a gift, God has a plan, God has a purpose for your life. He wants to use you in this world to make a difference in the lives of people, to build His church, to reach lost people and to extend His kingdom. But if all you do in that is not carried by love, he calls it noise. 
It's noise. It's meaningless. Check this out. Band, you guys can come join me. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in tongues of men and angels, in other words, if I have a great spiritual gift, but I don't have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I do not have love, I'm nothing. Meaningless. If I give away all that I have and I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. When I, when I think about like our dream teamers, and I think about all the people that serve and all the, I look out and there's people wearing these you know, amazing dream team t-shirts and there's the band and there's the people in the cafe and the kids teams and there's, there's the car park guys. And I, when I think about all the people that serve in the life of our church, I, I thank God for each of you. In fact, I wonder, church, if you could do me a favor and put your hands together for every single person that is making this possible. Did you know that it takes about 200 volunteers just to make Sunday happen every week? Heaps of you guys, given of your time and your love for God to serve His people. And, but I pray for each of us, wherever God calls you to serve, whatever you do, whether it's in the life of this church or outside of it, doesn't matter. I pray that the motivation for it is love. Because if it's not, sooner or later, you'll ask the question, why am I doing this again? When, when you're the car park person, offer the South Africans, that's the core pork. Or you pork your car. When you're the car park person and that you're, you're frustrated because no one can park straight and they ignore your instructions, and when you're in kids' ministry and that one kid bites you for the 27th time, when you're on the sound desk and all you ever get is complaints, when, you're, you, when the small group you lead is full of weirdos and drama, when the teenagers you're leading are making dumb decisions and when you're on the band and you gotta be here at 6.30 a.m. in the cold of winter on a Sunday morning, whatever it is, your motivation has to be love. Remember, I'm, you're here, I'm here because God loves you. First, He loved you. And I love Him and I love His people and I love His church. And there is a supernatural fruit of the Spirit that is given to me to love Him and love His people and love this world. Here's the question. Is my service bearing the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, or is there still some flesh I need to deal with? If it's, if it's for recognition and accolade and position and title, that's a whole lot of flesh. Because love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't boast. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. So your service isn't about you. It's not seeking for me. It's looking to bless others. What I'm going to do in a few moments is I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for each of us that we would have a fresh and filling of the Holy Spirit. But what I also wanna encourage you is this, we have a prayer team after the service, they will be down the front and they would count it their joy to pray for you. If you're here in this church and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, you've never received that, then I wanna encourage you, come out after the service, the team would love to pray for you to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit or come out tonight, we're gonna to have a great time, extend a prayer and worship, we're gonna be praying for people, please just come out tonight, get a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Here's what I've learned. If you've got a gift of the Holy Spirit, what that communicates me is, is that God has been gracious to you because He gave you a gift. You didn't earn it or deserve it, it's a gift. So that tells me you've received grace. But if you have fruit, it tells me you're connected to Him. You can have a gift and not be connected, but you can't bear fruit without connection. If you chop a branch off a tree, that thing ain't producing no fruit. So you can have all the wild, wonderful gifts of God you want, but if you're not connected to Him, you're never gonna bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So here's what I'd love to do is encourage us that maybe we, some of us have lost connection, lost relationship, to come back to that place that we might bear not just the gifts of God, not the gifts, just the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit founded and grounded and moved in the fruits 
of the Holy Spirit. Can we pray? Let's bow our heads for a moment. Maybe even right now where you're sitting, maybe just open your hands in a posture of receiving. Lord, I, I thank you for every person that's here. I thank you for them. Lord, you know them, you love them, you've called them. And Lord, there is a war waging inside of each of us between spirit and flesh. And God, we just, Lord, we pray, help us to put aside and put to death those fleshly bits of us that seem to keep coming up. And Lord, may we be filled afresh right now in the name of Jesus by your Holy Spirit, that we would be those who bear the fruit that comes from connection and relationship with you. God, I pray that you'd help us as a church to bear the fruit of love in our words, in our service, in every area of our lives. May the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, be evident in all that we do. Just with your eyes closed and head bowed, I want to pray one more prayer. If you're here in the room today and you don't know Jesus, maybe you've never made a decision to follow Him, maybe you have before, but you'd be honest and say, Steve, my life is far from God today. The truth is, friends, God loves you, God made you, God has a wonderful plan for your life. We all mess up, we all sin, we all fall short of God's standard and our sin separates us from God. The payment that is due for our sin is death. But God in His grace sent His own Son, Jesus, to a cross. When He died on that cross, He paid the debt that you and I would do for our sin. And then He conquered death in the grave and He rose again to new life. And He extends to every single one of us today His gift of grace. Forgiveness for your yesterday. Forgiveness for your sin. A new life that begins right here, right now. It's called being born again by the Spirit of God. God will make you a new person from the inside out. You get to walk into the plans that God has for you. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And then there's this great promise of eternity in heaven with Him. And if you're here today and you're not right with God, but you wanna be, I wanna invite you to pray a simple prayer with me. I'll pray this out loud. You just pray with me in your heart. Just say these words. Say, God, today, I surrender my life to you. I know I've sinned and I know I've messed up, but I believe Jesus, you died for me. So right now, I turn from my old way and I turn to you. I ask you to come in and be the Lord of my life. I choose from this day and this moment to follow you. Would you come and be my Lord and my Savior today in Jesus' name?